Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Bill Evans. Uh, as Britain Spaniola suggested, I'm acting in the capacity as senior product manager today. Uh, I'm also the general manager of the business storage solutions at Western Digital and was previously the CEO of Arkea Software. So the subject of the webinar today is of great interest to me. Uh, it came to our attention last month that Unitrends maintains on their website a web page dedicated to the WD Archaea product. Unitrends makes claims about the WD Archaea product that are patently untrue. Uh, we would like to, in the interest of full disclosure, share with you what we know about our product, what we believe is true about the Unitrends product, to give you, all the attendees in this webinar, an opportunity to compare them on a fair basis. Some of these claims by Unitrends are listed here. I want to go through many of these claims and present just the facts so you can decide. First, Unitrends makes the claim that our Kia's product suite is derived through an integration of multiple acquisitions. And I agree with them that you would have reason to be concerned if the software product that you were considering for an important role in your company was the result of an amalgamation of many different software applications because integrating software applications is notoriously difficult. Let me set the record straight by saying that yes, Arkea Software did do one acquisition. This was an acquisition conducted in December of 2009 where we acquired a company called Kadena Systems based in Santa Clara, California. Kadena is a company that was founded by alumni of Veritas and NetApp. We acquired Kadena because we wanted their technology and their patent portfolio for progressive deduplication. We believe that deduplication is an absolutely critical technology for network backup because it makes possible a reduction of the traffic on the LAN as well as a reduction on the traffic of traffic on the WAN when you're replicating backup sets over the internet. The inventor of progressive deduplication, a mathematician named Tamir Rahm, is today a WD employee. He was earlier the CTO at Kadena. Uh, Kadena had one patent granted at the time of the acquisition and WD has several more in process. The integration of the Kadena algorithms into the Archaea software is very, very tight. There is no Kadena web user interface or command line interface that's visible. The only interface we made to the Kadena software was through the applications programming interfaces of the software. So we think that because of the way we integrated Kadena that this kind of acquisition is safe for for a software acquisition. We think other kinds of acquisitions, we agree that other kinds of acquisitions could be problematic. We observe that Unitrends has recently acquired themselves a couple companies, both with distinct user interfaces, these being PhD Virtual and Virtual Sharp. They may have acquired other companies of which we are not aware. The ownership of the two companies, of course, is very different. Arkea Software was an independent company at the time that Kadena Systems was acquired. We were ourselves acquired by Western Digital in December of 2012. We understand that Unitrends was acquired by a private equity firm called Insight Venture Partners in 2013. We observe that acquisition by private equity is a relatively unusual path for a software company to follow to either an initial public offering or an acquisition by a larger company. Let's talk a little bit about the products. Unitrends makes the claim that Archaea backup agents are installed on client machines and deploy the backup server as a traditional software application. It's true that for Archaea, agents are installed in client machines. That's also true for Unitrends. That's also true for um, Symantec Net Backup. This is the way network backup products work. But they suggest that the backup server for Archaea can only be deployed as a traditional software application. Nothing could be further from the truth. The backup servers that Archaea provides 
were first delivered as a software application. That was back in 1999. But since then, we introduced physical appliances in 2007 and virtual appliances the next year in 2008, now six years ago. Some of the key technologies that we've made uh, a part of our solution have been the patented progressive deduplication that we acquired from Kadena, a technology for multi-flow that allows the parallel backups of up to 200 clients, including multiple backup streams for a single client in the case that that client has multiple volumes that can be accessed independently because they live on different spindles, different disk drives. Another focus of our efforts to provide the fastest possible performance is a technology that we call seed and feed. Seed and feed gives us the ability to take a backup set, export it to a hard drive, and ship it to some remote destination via FedEx or UPS or, or some other sneaker net mechanism. It also permits us to feed subsequent backups. Any backup that's simply too large to be sent over the wide area network can be exported and sent by parcel post to the destination backup server. Still another technology performance for performance that we offer is our optimized restore. Many backup solutions back up a full backup and then layer incremental backup restores on top of that. When we do a recovery, we only write each file once, and our catalog permits us to identify the file that is precisely the file needed to achieve the restore point objective. Still another technology for performance is our scale-out architecture. We do compression and dedupe and encryption on the client. The attraction of a scale-out architecture means that you can enjoy high performance even when you have a large number of clients. The alternative is to do all the processing on the backup server, but that's a dumb strategy because if you do all the processing on the backup server, that backup server becomes a bottleneck, especially when there are large numbers of clients. We let you perform compression and dedupe on the client. You can also do it on the backup server if you choose, but generally doing it on the client is the most scalable solution. Another area of focus for us has been ease of use. We've invested heavily in our web user interface. We, we also offer a single solution for both physical and virtual environments. We also make possible the support, the protection of over 240 different physical platforms with our software. You can see the full list on the www.archea.com website. Ease of use means making it easy for the administrator to do the job without having to, for example, support multiple backup solutions. Because we offer broad, broad platform support, because we're committed to supporting new platforms as they become available, this minimizes the, the burden on the IT administrator. Technologies that we offer that contribute to the affordability of our product include the fact that every backup server comes with unlimited agents for file and folder backup. So you can have 100 agents, 200 agents of a particular Linux type, or 1 in 200 agents of a particular Windows type. Uh, as many agents as you want of any of the over 240 different types that we provide. Moreover, there are no per CPU, also known as per socket fees or per core fees, our pricing is intended to be simple as well as affordable. One particular feature that makes our product effectively more affordable is the fact that if you deploy a backup server, say version 10, this backup server will work with, of course, all the agents that are version 10. But a version 10 backup server will also protect clients that are using agents version 9, version 8, version 7, 6, 5, all the way back to version 4. It was at version 4 that we adopted the strategy that every backup server would support all past versions of all agents. The benefit of this is that if you want to upgrade your backup server, you can do so without having to go to the trouble of changing all of the agents on your other clients. Because we have customers that have several hundred, up to, to my knowledge, 800 
clients protected by a single backup server, this is a really important feature of our software. Let me talk about the architecture to give you some background. We have a classic network backup architecture for WDR Kia. A backup server manages a number of backup agents, each on a client machine. The backup server is controlled through a graphical web user interface or through a command line interface. For most interaction, the graphical web user interface is the preferred mechanism. It's easier. The command line interface, though, is very powerful if you want to script often repeated activities. The targets of our backups can be disk storage, file or block, can be tape, uh, either drives or libraries, and we've tested our product with over 600 uh, drives and libraries. If the backup is to cloud, this cloud can be either a public cloud or a private cloud or a local storage device. If you have more than one backup server, you can control either one through the web or command line, but you can also replicate backup servers, backup sets between the backup servers. This is a great mechanism to do replications to either remote offices or to the cloud. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the backup servers that we offer can be deployed as a software application, and we support 130 different Linux platforms. Uh, you can deploy our backup servers as an appliance, and the capacities today range from 4 terabytes raw to 48 terabytes raw. One of our appliances supports an integrated tape drive, and all of them support external tape drives. Finally, you can deploy our backup servers if you want as a virtual appliance. Uh, these virtual appliances run on VMware vSphere hypervisors. Let's talk about the backup agents for a sec. Every backup agent gives you the right to backup an unlimited number of files and folders on any of our over 240 different platforms. Every agent permits progressive deduplication on the client. You can also do progressive deduplication optionally on the server at no additional charge, but the simplicity of doing it on the, on the client is really a, a benefit of performance more than anything. In addition to this basic bundle that's included with all of our backup agents and, um, and, um, and an unlimited number of backup agents is delivered with a backup server. We also offer optional bundles. These bundles include a Microsoft bundle, a premium bundle for applications like MySQL and LDAP, a data center bundle for advanced applications and databases like Oracle and DB2, as well as a virtualization bundle with agents for VMware and Hyper-V. Again, with the virtualization bundle, you can support any number of hypervisors of either flavor. Another claim made by Unitrends on their website is that the non-integrated nature of our Kia software suite leads to finger pointing among the server, storage, networks, operating systems, and data protection software vendors when a problem occurs. This is quite a mouthful. Let, let's focus on the, the individuals, the, the constituencies that can participate in the finger pointing. They list five, server storage networks, operating system, and the data protection software vendor. So Unitrans or Arkea would, be, would qualify as a data protection software vendor. Well, it's true that there are these five constituencies when you deploy a solution as a software application, but there are fewer constituencies when you deploy it as a virtual appliance and still fewer when you deploy it as a physical appliance. And the constituencies exist whether or not Unitrends is the vendor or Arkea is the vendor. So the finger pointing constituencies for physical appliances will always be networks and the data protection vendor. So when Unitrends claims that or suggests that 
these five constituencies are only a problem with our Kia. The fact is, if you deploy a physical appliance, there's always the potential for finger pointing between networks and data protection vendors. If you deploy a virtual appliance, and both our Kia and W, both our Kia and Unitrends provide a virtual appliance, uh, the number of finger pointing participants grows from two to four. There's still the issue of the hardware server. There's still the issue of the storage. There's still, of course, networks and data protection. It's only when you go to the software application that you add the final dimension, the fifth dimension of operating system. But when Unitrend suggests that this is somehow a problem specific to Archaea, they demonstrate that they simply don't understand how these architectures work. One thing I want to emphasize about the WD Archaea solution is that we provide identical functionality across the appliances and the application. You can replicate from a physical appliance to a virtual appliance or from a virtual appliance to software in any combination. The same agents are installed on clients. You can deploy 100 agents along with the physical appliance. And if later you decide you want to deploy the software application, you don't need to reinstall the agents. So the question is, which of these deployments is best for a customer? It's not an obvious solution. It's not only a physical appliance. There was a day when Unitrends only had a physical appliance. Now they have physical and virtual. Uh, someday maybe they'll have as much as Archaea has and also have a software application. If we analyze the three different forms of deployment of the backup server on a series of criteria, including tech expertise, speed of provisioning, physical security, seed and feed functionality, whether it's a fully engineered solution and its degree of configurability, uh, we can see that different solutions fit better uh, as a solution to different requirements. If, for example, you're absolutely looking for a product that is going to require the absolute minimum in tech expertise, then it's almost certainly the physical appliance that's the right solution. If your interest is in finding something that can be provisioned very rapidly because, for example, you're an MSP, then it's the virtual appliance that's probably the right choice for you. But if, on the other hand, you want maximum configurability, you want maximum storage space, you want maximum CPU, uh, and you want to be able to make these choices yourself, then it's clearly the software application that's going to be right for you. And if you change your mind, Archaea gives you the possibility to retain your investment in the agent installations and simply change your deployment of the backup server. Speaking of appliance specifications, uh, let's drill into a couple of appliances, one from Unitrends, one from Archaea. Uh, for this analysis, we tried to choose two that were comparable in terms of their capacity and price. We found one Unitrends appliance, it's a rack mount, a Unitrends Recovery 813, and we found that it had dual interfaces, uh, it had nine terabytes of usable capacity, and it had an MSRP of about $1,300 or $1,450 per terabyte. This is very similar, superficially, to a WD Archaea DA2300. Now, the DA2300 is a desktop. It's a very small device. It's a little bit bigger than four three and a half inch hard drives that it contains. Uh, it doesn't have eSATA, but it does have USB 3.0. Remarkably, the MSRP per terabyte is almost identical to the Unitrends Recovery 813. The WD Archaea is $1,477. The prices shown here were taken off the CDW website on January 21st before this webinar was given the first time. Even though the, the two appliances are superficially similar, there really are a lot of very important differences. Uh, let's look at the, the CPU. Uh, the CPUs are both Xeon CPUs. Uh, the attraction of the more powerful Archaea CPU is that it gives you an opportunity to do server-side dedupe and compression, 
we don't offer a smaller CPU because you can do dedupe on the client side. We offer a more powerful CPU, an E3, so that it's practical to have a real choice between clients and server side dedupe. If you, and, and the difference, to, to jump back for a moment, the, the difference between these two CPUs uh, is shown probably best in the Passmark benchmark, uh, one being more than 50% more powerful than the other. So we think that WDR Kia has a, an edge in terms of performance. And this is consistent with the launch date of the processors. The Unitrends processor was launched in Q3 of 2009. We at WD worked very hard to keep up with the latest Intel processors, and the DA2300's processor was launched in Q2 of 2012. If we move on to the hard drives, you can see that the WDR Kia appliance uses enterprise-grade hard drives. These are the WDSE hard drives. Enterprise hard drives are qualitatively different from desktop drives. Desktop drives lack functions and design that permits them to handle the rotational vibration that's implicit in a RAID array or a rack. So this vibrational, uh, this vi vibrational rotation, the rotational vibration perhaps better said, is something that you're much more vulnerable to if you're in a rack than in a desktop, yet we have the protection and the Unitrends product does not. Another feature of enterprise drives is time-limited error recovery. If you have a RAID array, you certainly want time-limited error recovery because if ever your disk drive stumbles uh, due to a problem with the media, for example, the disk drive will try to recover. And if it takes too much time to recover, it will drop out of the RAID array and report that you have an invalid RAID array, and it will start a, a, a rebuild process after the RAID array is uh, provided with a new drive. This is not the right strategy. You want an enterprise-grade drive that gives you time-limited error recovery so that you know that you're going to have an answer back from the drive before the drive drops out of the RAID array. Uh, and incidentally, uh, the, the price of enterprise drives, of course, is much higher than the price of desktop drives. On Newegg, the model of drive that we use is priced at $272 each, whereas the price of the desktop drive used by Unitrans is priced at $115 each. Uh, the RAID that we use is also different. We use RAID 1. Unitrends uses RAID 5. The advantage of RAID 1 is that the probability of data loss and the time to rebuild are lower because there are more, there is more redundancy in the RAID 1. Another advantage of RAID 1 is that we make it possible for you to acquire a DA2300 with only two disk drives and then later upgrade it to four disk drives. This means you don't spend more for your solution up front than you need to yet you can have a more highly scaled solution subsequently. Still another difference between the appliances is the way we boot. Both are Linux-based appliances, but we've invested in a flash disk on module, a flash DOM. We boot from the DOM. DOMs are faster, and DOMs, because they're hard read-only, give you better protection against malware. Unitrans boots off a hard drive. Still another difference is the fact that the WDR Kia appliance uses SSD for the backup catalog. Having SSD for the backup catalog greatly improves the performance of catalog updates, particularly important when you have large numbers of files or small files. The RAM capacities of the, the two systems are different. Uh, the, the fact that the power supplies in the Arkea product are dual redundant but single in the Unitrends is still another example. Uh, the use of ECC memory in WD Arkea and the redundant power supplies are examples of server-grade features, of enterprise-grade features that Unitrends simply does not have. Uh, note also the, the comparison in the power required for the two units. 
the power supply of the Unitrends box is 560 watts. The power supply of the Archaea box is 150 watts. We believe that lower power translates to lower heat and higher reliability. And then finally, even the operating systems are, are similar but different. Archaea is on CentOS version 6.4, while Unitrends remains on, Ar remains on Linux CentOS 5.5 which is very out of date compared to the current CentOS release of 6.5. Uh, another claim made by Unitrends is that Archaea provides support for Linux distributions and open source applications such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, and OpenLDAP. Well, that's true, but the implication is that's all we provide. In the table on this slide, uh, I compare the agents, the platforms for which we have agents versus those for which Unitrends has agents. Uh, you can see that we have support for Lotus Domino and Unitrends does not. You can also see that we have support, direct support for Microsoft SharePoint. Unitrends depends on a Microsoft tool. We have support for DB2 and Unitrends does not. We have support for MySQL and Unitrends does not. We have support for all versions via RMAN of the Oracle database. We have support for PostgreSQL. We have support for eDirectory via SMS and Unitrends does not. And we have support for OpenLDAP and Unitrends does not. So we provide broad support not simply support for open source applications, but we think open source, like MySQL, is an important part of today's IT landscape. If we look not at the protection of applications and databases and directory servers, but at the protection of platforms, it's a similar story. Archaea has much broader support than Unitrends, though we acknowledge that Unitrends supports the OS 400 iSeries 6, a platform that Archaea does not support. So this is to their credit. Uh, we support free, free BSD and, and 32 and 64-bit versions. This is similar to our support for Linux, where we offer distinct packages for 32 and 64-bit versions, not simply a 32-bit package. That would be easier, but the performance would be less good. We're focused on the performance of your backups, and that requires distinct packages. And then as you can see on this slide, there are a whole series of other platforms that we protect and Unitrends does not. This is important, not so much looking backwards as looking forwards. Archaea has provided many, many agents for many, many platforms over the last 15 years we think that providing a single solution for all of the platforms in your shop is our mandate. And just as we've done it in the past, and just as we continue to support those old platforms, we're committed to supporting new platforms and continuing to support them. We don't simply give up on support after they're no longer fashionable or no longer popular or no longer dominant in the market. We have a relationship with our customers that requires that we maintain support for these platforms again, even when they're no longer fashionable. You can see the full list of platforms by going to www.archaea.com slash platforms. Another claim is that Unitrends protects 100 plus versions of OS and applications. And on the face of it, that might be impressive, but if you do the math, 100 plus pales to the 255 that WD Archaea supports. Let's talk about licensing. The claim made by Unitrends is that Archaea's licensing fees tend to be expensive for growing businesses due to the licensing model, charging on a per feature, per client, per operating system, and the like basis. I'm not quite sure how they came to this conclusion. Let me summarize the pricing model for WD Archaea. For WD Archaea, you choose first whether you want a hardware appliance or a software solution, whether application or virtual appliance. If you choose a hardware appliance, the capacity is based on the disk capacity in the appliance. 
If you choose the software or virtual appliance, it's based on source capacity. With either choice, you get bundled at no additional charge an unlimited number of client licenses, agents for all of the licenses that we've described, for all the platforms I described previously, as well as licenses for tape management, local replication, and of course, progressive deduplication. There are optional bundles that you can choose either for the hardware appliances or for the software. These optional bundles include one for virtualization, one for Microsoft applications, one for premium applications and databases like MySQL and LDAP, and one for the data center with products like Oracle and DB2. And then finally, there are optional individual licenses that you can choose, one for remote replication, one for encryption, and one for bare metal restore. These are priced separately because we don't want you to have to pay for things you don't use. Uh, but we think that all of these are priced affordably, and you'll find a comparison of our prices with any other vendor's prices to be, to be very attractive to our, to our Kia and to you. So when we're talking about pricing transparency, which was effectively what, what Unitrans suggested in their claim, I observed that with WDR Kia, the price of the backup server always bundles the first year maintenance. For Unitrans, it's required but not bundled. When it comes to the pricing of our virtual appliance, you can use any number of CPUs on your hypervisor on which you're running the WDR Kia virtual appliance, whereas Unitrends charges on a per socket basis. Let's talk a little bit about the technologies used by the two products. Unitrends claims that installation and performing source-level deduplication as well as compression and or encryption requires balancing of resources when using our Kia on systems because of the load it places on those systems. Uh, this is a familiar argument that's been used against uh, source-side deduplication. We think that source-side deduplication is the most scalable solution, but of course if you have a client for which source-side dedupe is not suitable, you can always choose to do that deduplication on the server side. But let's talk more about this idea of scale-out systems. Unitrends has a classic scale-up system where all the deduplication processing is happening on the server. So if you have two clients, the deduplication is being done on the server. If you add another client, you need a bigger server. If you add still another client, you need a still bigger server. And if you add a still another client, that server has to continue to grow. This is the nature of centralizing all the processing on the server. By comparison, WDR Kia uses a scale-out architecture. We promote a scale-out architecture, whereby if you have two clients, the load of dedupe is on those clients, so a server can match that load very nicely. If you add more clients, the load is performed on those clients so the server doesn't have to scale up. Let's summarize some of the differences in the architecture. We just talked about the distribution of, of deduplication load and showed that, reported that Unitrends is server-side deduplication. We support either the client or the server. One downside of doing all the deduplication on the server side is that uncompressed backup sets are being moved over the local area network. So the network burden is much higher with server-side deduplication. Uh, another difference in architectures between the two is the requirement for staging. For backups to tape or backups of Oracle or SharePoint, staging is required. With Archaea, staging is never required. You can backup directly to tape. You can restore directly from tape without the need for staging. This makes a big difference in the performance of both backups and recovery. The catalog database strategies of the two companies are also very different. Unitrends uses an off-the-shelf, open source, relational database management system called PostgreSQL. This is a good relational database management system, but it's not optimized for the problem that 
network backup servers have. We built our own database optimized to the problem at hand of one writer and many readers. Because the requirements of our database are less severe than the general requirements of a relational database management system, we can enjoy much higher performance than companies using an off-the-shelf solution. And then finally, architecturally, I compare the maximum number of concurrent backups of clients for Unitransit 8 with our Kia for 200. Deduplication uh, has similar clear differences. How the deduplication is done with Unitrends is, is interesting. They use both file grain and fixed block, both of them very old, very low performance technologies. Uh, the compression rates they provide are much less than the kinds of compression rates that we can provide using progressive deduplication. And again, they do it on the server. We can do it on the client or the server. They do it post-processed. We do it in line. The cost of doing it post-process is you need more disk on your target storage so you can store the backup both uncompressed and compressed at the same time. The configuration of deduplication, whether to do it or not, for example, for Unitrends is determined on a per-appliance basis. For our Kia, it's a per-backup job basis. Uh, we don't know much about what Unitrends does to reclaim orphaned block uh, or from block data on disk, but WDR Kia has made a huge investment in its deduplication infrastructure, including garbage collection or the rec reclamation of orphan blocks uh, during incremental backups. Let me talk a little bit more about the, again, the benefits of, of doing deduplication processing at the source rather than at the target. If you do target side deduplication like unit trends, you will get benefits on the storage dimension uh, on your target storage. You won't get any benefits of reduced network traffic, and you'll be using a, a, a model of backup server scaling that's scale up, as you saw earlier. So in the case of Unitrends, you push the backup set over the wire, and then only later do you compress it. In the case of Archaea, you first compress it, and then you push it over the wire. This is exceptionally important because most backups are constrained by network performance. If you want your backups to go faster, you'll generally have to add more network capacity. Um, that's after you put enough power on the clients, enough power on the servers. The last thing to do, the final bottleneck, is typically LAN bandwidth. Let me review a little bit also this, this subject of deduplication grains. As I mentioned earlier, Unitrends uses file and fixed block grains. The benefit of having a, a file grain dedupe is that it's very fast, but the disadvantage is the compression multipliers are very low. Fixed block is a little bit less fast, but the compression multipliers aren't much better. So while Unitrends uses file and fixed block, WDR Kia uses progressive deduplication. Notice that the decomposition of the file in fixed block is into non-overlapping blocks, each of the same size. The decomposition of files under variable block, which is the technology used by appliances like those from uh, data domain, is having blocks of varying sizes but non-overlapping. The technology that WDR Kia uses, progressive dedupe, uses fixed blocks that can overlap. This gives us both the benefit of speed, comparable to fixed block, but compression as good or better than variable block. We have a white paper on our website if you're interested in learning more about progressive deduplication. In order to illustrate our claims of performance, we thought we'd do a quick performance benchmark of unit trends. We're defining the benchmark here so you can repeat it in your own laboratory. For our performance benchmark, we use three source files. All of them are publicly available. 
uh, well, available if you're a, a Unitrends customer. The first is the ISO file for Windows 8.1 64-bit. You can download that from Microsoft.com. Uh, the second is a, an ASCII file that you can find on the Unitrends appliances called slash root slash install dot log. And the third one is a, a binary file also on the Unitrends appliance slash boot slash VM Linux, et cetera. So what we've done is we've done a series of backups. These backups are done on the backup server itself. The purpose here is to eliminate the impact of the network, eliminate the impact of the agents, and simply work with the CPU and memory capacity of the backup server alone. What we've done are eight full backups where the deduplication obviously is at the target, and we've used default configurations for both appliances. The way we measured the results is we used for WD, the web user interface, reports, backups, and monitor disk storage, disk storage backups and status. And for Unitrends, uh, we did it through a, a combination of their UI, reports, backup reports, and then through the file system because we found we, we weren't getting the comparable information that we needed using the Unitrends web user interface. The eight backups that we did are defined here. Different combinations of files, different numbers of files, the size of the backups are different, but it's the combination of these eight files that we thought represented a, a reasonable standard for a benchmark, and again, one that you can repeat in your own offices. The results are pretty clear. When it comes to data transfer rate, the Arkea product was dramatically faster, typically three times faster than Unitrends. When it comes to compression rates, the Arkea product ramped uh, to higher and higher compression rates as additional backups of those same files were repeated again and again. Much of this is a result of the difference between progressive deduplication algorithms and fixed block or file grain deduplication. There's really no comparison. After eight backups, it's almost an order of magnitude difference. Uh, here we summarize it as a, a five times difference, um, but it, it, it certainly can be a, a much larger difference than that. Finally, let me say a few words about a comparison that we've made of ease of use. Unitrends claims that setting up Arkea product suites can be difficult. Well, we observe that Unitrends is not well positioned to, to criticize ease of use. We looked at their screens for monitoring a backup job, and we're surprised to see that the progression bar at the bottom wasn't the progression bar for the backup, but it was instead the progression bar for the auto refresh. By comparison, the way WD monitors a backup job or multiple backup jobs is shown on this screen. The instant backup speed is shown and the average backup speed is shown. The way Unitrends reports data reduction is shown here. We were surprised that in this report it claimed a deduplication ratio of 48,000 to 1, uh, which is a little bit hard to believe based on our experience. By comparison, the WD Archaea reports on data reduction are shown here. We compare total source side, native data size, with the disk space used on disk for the backup set. So with that, I've sought to refute some of the claims that Unitrend made. Uh, Unitrends has made about the WD Archaea product. We're, we're flattered that, that Unitrends has gone to the trouble to to try to describe how we compare to their product. Uh, we think that uh, if they perhaps exerted more of, the, more of the resources they assigned to their marketing efforts, to their software engineering efforts, they might be a more formidable competitor than they would otherwise be. Let me say a, a couple words about the Western Digital Business Storage Solutions business unit and then take your questions. Uh, Western Digital, is the world's largest manufacturer of hard disk drives. 
this is a business that we started in 1988. We weren't the first manufacturer of hard disk drives, but we entered the market in 1988, and we sell direct primarily to OEMs these hard drives, and today we're number one in the market. The three players in the market today are WD, Seagate, and Toshiba. The second business that WD focuses on is consumer storage solutions. And you can see the products that we've developed for consumers that we sell primarily through retail channels. We started in this business in 2007, and today we're number one. Our products like Elements and My Passport are available worldwide. You can certainly see them in stores like uh, Best Buy and Walmart and Amazon. The business storage solutions business is the most recent business of WD. We started this business in 2011. We sell business storage solutions, both software and appliances, to small and medium businesses, and we sell through the VAR channel, exclusively through the VAR channel. So if you have, uh, if you're a, uh, I guess, predisposed to, to, to bet whether we're going to be able to become number one or not, I invite you to do so. But our, our intention is to be number one in this market just as we've achieved the number one status in consumer storage and storage components. So we think you should choose WD Archaea as your solution for network backup. Above all, we want you to make the choice based on true information and a careful analysis of your requirements and the products from every vendor. We look forward to competing for your business. I uh, would very much like to be able to provide you 